Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, a game that's currently in early access, available directly through the developer's website, Game Lab, um, and it has a Steam page, which I believe they're trying to get the Steam page launched, or the game launched on Steam by the end of the year. It's still a ways away from a final product, but we are taking a look at the beta version of their campaign game, which they've just recently added, which allows you to fight a war between the Germans and the British Empire in the 1890s. You're the head of the Navy of either of those powers. You have to design ships, manage research, manage funding, build ships, and then fight battles. The battles are all randomly generated, uh, but you do get to fight them on a 3D map. This is part number five of the British campaign that we're playing. In the last episode, we did pretty badly maul an enemy light cruiser force, really crippling the enemy light cruiser force for the entire Navy. In today's video, we're going to be facing off against more than half of all their armored or heavy cruisers, depending on if you prefer using pre-World War I terminology or World War II terminology. At the end of the day, they're heavily armed heavy cruisers. Um, and that's what we're going to be witnessing in this video. This was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel, so if you're interested in joining those in the future, there's a link in the description to go ahead and check that out. I hope you guys enjoy the video, leave your thoughts below, and I'll catch you guys at the end. You're right, Bull. They'd be armored cruisers, but that's effectively a heavy cruiser in concept. CA, cruiser armored. Same abbreviation for armored cruisers and heavy cruisers. Okay, let's fight this thing. All sorts of big ass battles. Six heavy cruisers versus five heavy cruisers. We have two. I don't even know why they're not all just in one line, but apparently two of our ships are set to screen. So we've got a flotilla of four. I don't know that it would be possible to have four eight inch guns on a 3,500 ton ship in this era. The Good Hope. The Endymion and the Hawk. The one problem we're going to deal with is the enemy does have a speed advantage, so if they see us and decide we're out, we can't really do anything about it. All right, smoke to the northeast, so let's turn that way. Set to time 10 compression. Oh, we spotted him. All right. Looks like we might have a slight advantage. I'm going to do this. I'm going to have all my ships... Focus on one enemy cruiser. You can see the enemy are coming into line here. They appear to be turning and running already. That's not going to be very fun if they all just run away. So let's go for their line. Let's close the range. They don't have fish, right? No torpedoes. Nice. All right, we're going to focus on the second ship in the line. The Thor has engine damage, which is brilliant. Let's focus on the next ship now. Let's just slow them down. Let's just prevent them from escaping. Actually, let's focus on the Freya. I know I keep switching targets, and that's generally a bad idea, but she's much closer and a much better target. Our lead ship, the King Alfred, is getting pounded. Formation's following us. We've allowed our own T to be crossed. I'm just relying on the weight of numbers, really, in terms of... ...shells. But King Alfred is in close here. Lots of penetrating hits, but a lot of minor hits, not a lot of heavy hits yet. A lot of secondary shells flying everywhere. These screening ships don't seem to be doing much. Why is King Alfred turning? Oh, she took some major flooding damage. So she's... This is the thing. The AI just decides we're going to veer out of... Out of line. King Alfred. 
slow down, and stay in the fight. That may have been a mistake. We'll see. Also, the uh, shells fly at comically slow speeds. The problem is because they have the speed advantage, they're able to get like out there ahead of me so much quicker. Let's fire at the Baden. She looked like she was closing in on the Alfred. If she had a torpedo, she'd probably be firing it for to go for the kill. Alfred's taking the bulk of the punishment. She's moving slow, engaging the Baden here. We've got the Good Hope firing on the Baden. Also got the Endymion and the Hawk, so our th three line of battle. I was all firing at her. King Alfred taking a fair bit of float damage, but the Baden has also taken some, some hits here. Rear of her ship is on fire. Alfred's not going to be able to keep up. Yeah, but these guys, they just have a speed advantage, so I've kind of got the lead ship in my formation that gets pounded while the others try to keep up. And there's nothing I can do to get these guys to close because they're just, they're not fast enough. So it's, uh, it's a race. Although they're turning ahead of us. Presumably to present their broadsides. Now the one saving grace we have is they're firing toward the front of our ship so they're getting really bad angles. Let's turn a little bit and get our rear broadside into action here. Our rear turret. Somehow, at this range, we still only have a 10% chance of a hit. We're less than a kilometer away. Let's slow down a little bit. Get a goddamn hit, you fools. A whole bunch of secondary hits on us. They're going to win this battle. Would be their first, or well, second, technically. If I can land one of my goddamn eight-inch salvos. What's the weather look like? Evening, clear, light breeze, and smooth. Penetration and fire, that was a nice hit there. Those rear ships are catching up slightly. Nice flooding damage hit there on the bottom. What's their cruiser design? Cramped with maximum bulkheads. So that's an advantage for their CAs, is they have maximum bulkheads. Good Hope is turning out a line. She's no longer the lead ship in the task force anymore. She took flotation damage, so she's going to turn out a line and will not return. Because turning into the enemy is always the effective way to get out of danger, right? Well, nope, she's just going to turn in and take a whole bunch of extra punishment, I guess. This is maybe what I imagine Dodger Bank to be a little bit like. Baden has taken punishment, but she is remarkably sturdy there. Oh god, don't friendly fire your own ship. Three Aiden shells here for 200 flooding on the Baden. She's starting to take water.
good hope is some flooding damage too. More penetration and flooding. Endemion is doing a good job here. Two more flooding and penetration. Oh, that's King Alfred. She won't get back in the fight. 60 and 50. Why is this guy veering out? Why isn't he staying in line with the rest of the guys? Oh, because he's one of the screening cruisers. That's why. Damage main tower, counting tower damaged. Fuck. Penetration engine, three damaged with flooding and fire. I think we're going to get the rear enemy ship. All right. Sinks due to heavy flooding. That was kind of abrupt. They hadn't been taking that much damage. All right, let's pause. So we're going to turn the task force away a little bit to try and get a better... better angle on this rear ship, I think. Which is the Thor. Powerful. Your battle line. You guys come up the other direction. And then King Alfred, I'm just... I'm abandoning back there. She's not... She's too far gone. She's not going to get back into the fight. So they have... Four heavy cruisers left. We just sank one. And this is a stern chase. And I say it in every video, but a stern chase is a long chase. I don't know if we'll get another one. Again, they can make up to 19 and a half knots. Most of their ships are undamaged. I can't say that for my lead ships. Good Hope is trying to border. Ah. Uh, Good Hope's waiting till the ship passes and then she's going to slot in behind the Hawk. Alright, what's her range? 1-5. Got to get both guns on this lead ship firing on her. Eight inch shells are the only... That's our key advantage at this point. Their advantage is that they've got their entire line that's able to pretty much fire on us with a speed advantage, and they can focus on the lead ship. My one advantage is the heavier shells. And maybe crew experience. Not sure. There's our trained minor regular, so we do have a crew experience advantage. Range is opening. Partially because I'm turning away to try and get the turret in. Rear turret into action. Fuck it, I can't let him get away. Thor! Alright, we're getting some damage on Thor. Nothing significant, but if we can get like an engine compartment hit or something. We've got enough guns firing on her that it's not outrageous that we could get a good hit. But again, their pretty much whole broadsides can fire, whereas ours can't. Flooding damage may slow her down. A nine, two. She's still out, outpacing us. Doesn't help that we can't make... Most of our ships can't even make 15 knots. We've got to hope that we get some damage on her to slow her down or she's going to get away. Still a nice victory to sink one enemy armored cruiser. Hawk is on fire. Good hope is in line. Okay, we started gaining on her a little bit. She suffered some actually considerable float damage. 30 float. So we've closed to 1.8. It was up to 2. Still hanging out at 1.8. And the Mion can make up to 17.5 knots. Thor took more flotation damage. So she's going to slow down. 
All that drag on the ship. More flotation damage. Another 8-inch hit there. We're getting some good accuracy from these, these four to 8-inch guns. I'll turn and expose my whole broadside when we get inside a kilometer. I don't want them to fix anything. It looks like their steering is off, too. So we might get a second heavy cruiser. I don't know if we'll be able to work up the rest of the line or not in this fight. One, two. We could cross pass our stern and get our other guns in action. That side of the ship hasn't been fought yet. I don't know if that really matters. God, this is such a unadmiralty type fight. Just a stern chase with our forward guns firing, basically. It's just like everybody quick charge and run and hope to get some hits. They're repairing a lot of the damage here. Anything to keep them slow. Any more flooding we can do is great. Ten percent hit chance now. It's going up a little bit. A lot of ricochets, obviously, we're firing on a terrible angle to the, to the armor. Let's turn in. So, like, all the damage to the Thor you can see here is in these rear compartments. My damage is, interestingly enough, pretty pretty evenly spaced across the ship. Now, we did have our broadside presented to the enemy for a while. So they're actually outpacing us for the moment. Do, do, do. Is ramming possible? Yes! Uh... Martin, uh, you may have missed the last battle, but we actually rammed and sank an enemy ship in the last battle. It says their rudder is damaged. I don't think it's destroyed. They're probably doing some manual rudder work. Rather than hydraulics. Uh, no, the Malaya did not sink Neuhauser. The Malaya survived. We got to end battle screen after sinking another enemy light cruiser. They had one light cruiser left that was in good health, one that was critically damaged, and uh, they kept getting distracted by my torpedo boat out by them that prevented them from finishing the Malaya off. And then I got an end battle screen, and rather than wait and tempt fate, because the Malaya's flotation was at like 15%, I, uh, I just accepted the end battle. So we got the magical teleport away from the enemy and survive button. I don't, you don't normally see the end battle button when you're close in on a fight. They fired like six torpedoes at her too. The, the torpedo boat. Come on guys. Stern chases suck. I just wanted a nice good old fashioned broadside fight, but the AI just decided, nope, it's time to run. Which admittedly was probably the right choice.
Thor's getting away. So far, we've won the battle. We haven't suffered any ships sunk. We have faced... We've received a moderate amount of damage. On a per ship level, they've definitely done more damage to us. But we did sink one of them. And that's sort of going to be the kicker here. Be great to get a second armored cruiser, though. Two flotation hits. Yep, they're pulling a blue blue hair at Dodger Bank, and they're just saying, "Peace out, dudes. Sorry if you can't keep up." We'll keep shooting to try and help you, but you know what they say: if you meet a bear in the woods, you don't have to be able to outrun it. You just got to be able to run faster than your slowest friend. Flooding. And we're going to damage the Thor? We already have. I just don't know that we're going to be do able to do enough. That's the problem with designs where you're the slowest, slowest ship on the battlefield. Can't sink what you can't hit. Can't also sink what you can't catch. That fire's in the front of the ship. Interesting. Nice, a couple of flotation hits. Slowing them down a bit. More flotation hits. Those last couple of hits maybe... Maybe will prevent them from escaping. Down below 60%. Rudder damage on my lead ship. I'd love to ram this guy. I just can't catch him. He's too fast. But with his damage... He's back up to 70 already? Jeez. We're gaining a little bit. Taking some flotation damage too. Get the fucker. Now at Dodger Blank Bank, Blucher had the problem of being armored cruiser fast with heavy guns, but of only a moderate caliber. So the British battle cruisers are both faster and heavily armed, more heavily armed. And the rest of the German battle cruisers, which were built on a newer design, all had better guns and were faster. So the Blucher was clearly the most inferior ship on the field in terms of, quote, capital ships. So when it did become a running gunfight to escape, essentially the German admiral had to make the choice. Do I sacrifice my whole fleet because I know I can't escape if, the, if we are stuck at going the Blucher speed? Or do I just tell everybody to get out of there knowing that the Blucher is going to be the slowest one and she's going to be fucked? Because the Blucher was built on a faulty understanding that the, Brit the first British battle cruisers that they were building were all big gun ships, but they were using the traditional calibers or, or gun sizes of armored cruisers. Whereas they were not. They were using capital ship armaments. And at the, at the time, the Germans didn't yet have steam turbines all that well perfected. 
and they were still building their initial dreadnoughts with triple expansion engines, whereas the British were using steam turbines. So those early designs, the British had a pretty clear advantage there as well. I wonder if that damage of his funnel will slow him down. Fuck. All right, Endymion is turning out of line, and I don't have a choice about it. She's taking damage. Flotation down below 60. Oh, shit. I didn't even realize the enemy line's coming around to fight. Oh, they turned. Um. Okay, boys. What's your hit percentages? So you've... They've turned back. They're gonna... They're going for us. It's like Jutland. Oh, that may change things a bit. Meanwhile, ended me home turned to get out of the damn fight, and now she's getting... She's at the front of the enemy line. Everybody fire your broadsides. You can do it. Good Hope is our lead ship, so the task force forms on her. That and Powerful, who is the lead of the screening ships or what were the screening ships so much for a enemy withdrawal I'm going to focus on Thor oh shit three six inch hits there and pretty bad flooding on Undemil all right, Good Hope is turning. We're going to try and engage Thor at, at close range. Inside a kilometer. Nice. Engine 3 damage flooding. Rear turret didn't do much. Secondary tower damaged again? Where are you firing at anyway? Probably should fire at Thor. She took more damage. Let's turn the powerful in. Maybe we can cut the head of the enemy column off. If we swing powerful around with the Narcissus to cut off the sidelets while the other three ships focus on the rear of the column. I don't know if that's a sound strategy, but we're going to try it. So the powerful and the other screening vessel are going to turn here and focus on sidelets. While the rest of the ships focus on the rear of the enemy column and Thor. It's just the same two compartments that get hit all the time for flooding. How do we frickin' sink this guy? This might be one of those rare battles where you either run out of time or you run out of ammo. We have not reconquered the uh, king's territory of Hanover. Hey, Hawk, just a suggestion. But you're shooting at what? 1% target? Go for a 7. Oh, Narcissus didn't form up on uh, Powerful. Okay. So Powerful's out here all by herself. She has crossed the enemy T. But is all by herself. 
Reverse your turn. Get out of there, sir. Keep firing on Thor. Let's close and go for a, like, half a kilometer broadside. Ready the boarding pod is. If only we had... Alright, form up on battle line one. So Narcissus is now in line with the Good Hopes formation. Sidelitz is coming back to help Thor. Main tower is destroyed. More flooding for Thor. We're coming up on her. We are taking a pretty good amount of punishment on Good Hope. She's turning out of the line. Fuck. The AI is just like, nope. Don't want to die. And you missed both. You missed. How could you miss? But then the Good Hope like just decides, oh, I'm going to just stay here and slow down. I'm not commanding that. It's part of a formation. So it's actually being commanded by the AI. So Hawk, I think, is the last of the original three in that formation. Not badly damaged yet. Thor may just come apart from structural damage at this rate. Rather than flotation. You can see her structure's at 32%. Oh god. Hawk took some serious damage there. Two engines damaged, floats below 40... She's almost colliding with the enemy, but she's firing at, like, point-blank range. Cutting behind him and raking him from the stern. Man, that's some major sail tactics right there. What the hell are you doing, AI? And Demion's back in the lead. Penetration, fire flooding. How is the goddamn Thor still alive? Powerful and sidelets are going broadside to broadside. Sidelets is not faring well at 40%. Let's do it, boys. I think we can finish her off with a good old-fashioned ramming. Here we go. We just need the ironclad ram with us. She's not going to survive it. Boom! Ramming damage. Oh, fuck. We really fucked our ship up with flotation damage there. But Thor is sinking. So, hey, we did our job. Fuck, you're kind of in the way. The enemy might ram you, or you might ram him. If you can make any forward headway. They just missed ramming. Meanwhile, the sidelets is in rough shape. She's gonna sink. Oof. The amount of friendly fire is nuts. It's hard to keep track of, isn't it? Those enemy CAs were like, the other enemy armoreds, which we lost track of, were just like, this is a bad fight. Let's get the fuck out of here. The Freya and uh, whatever the other one was. Still, we sank... What, three enemy armored cruisers? I'll take it. The amount of friendly fire was nuts. I didn't even see. It was it was happening so fast I couldn't really keep track of. But we'll end the battle here. Decisive victory. The Baden, Sidelitz, and Thor were sunk. The Freya and one armored cruiser we never even identified were sunk. 
The Hawk and Endemion both suffered moderate damage. Oof. The British Navy is just teaching the Germans a lesson, including how to ram. Who would have thought ramming would play such an instrumental part in this war? From chasing becomes brawling. Hey, you know, this is that's probably what should have happened to the Germans at Jutland when they turned back to re-engage. But in any event, another victory for yours truly, another victory for the British Empire. That's going to do it for today's episode. I hope you guys did enjoy this video with some heavy cruiser combat. The closest thing we've really seen to battle line combat with ships just lining up and firing, although because it was a stern chase for most of the fight, it was really a little bit more chaotic. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave your thoughts down below. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.